spreading uh, circulation through the heart. So if you could see the drawing that we did here on the board, class, you just tell me, again, remember we're in anatomical position. So from anatomical position, what side of the heart looks larger? The left side looks larger, the right side looks smaller. Why is the left side larger? And why did I intentionally draw the musculature on that left side? Why did I make that myocardium thicker on the left than I did on the right? Because the left side is considered what type of circulation? <laughs> Systemic. It's designed to pump blood to all the systems of the body. The right side is really not working too hard because the right side is designed to pump blood that is not carrying oxygen, so we say it's deoxygenated. It's going to carry that deoxygenated blood into the lungs. It's not going too far. It's going from the heart to the lungs. That's right side. So it's not pumping aggressively. But the left side of the heart is designed to pump all of that blood that, that, um, that is oxygenated to all of the systems, including the great toe. OK? You just shut that door just so it's a little bit quiet. OK, so let's look at how does blood, we're going to start with the right atrium. So we have four chambers. We have two atriums, two ventricles. This will be the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. I also want you to pay attention to an orange. I put four valves. So we have these valves between the atriums and the ventricles. So we can say that those are called the AV valves. And the one that's on the right side one that's on the right side, we're going to call it the what? Tricuspid valve. And the one that's on the left side, we'll call the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. Okay, so we're good with that. Now I can erase this just to keep this nice and nice for everyone. So these are the AV valves, and these two are called semilunar valves, semilunar. The one on the right side is called the pulmonary semilunar, and the one on the left is called the aortic semilunar. So let's say now that we have blood that has been pumped to my arms and to my brain, it's brought the blood there and it's dumped the oxygen there. It needs the oxygen, to get into the cells that the mitochondria can use that oxygen for the Krebs cycle. To produce what? ATP for energy. Everything needs energy. Now that the oxygen has been dumped, how does that blood go back to the heart to become reoxygenated again? So it has to find its way back into which chamber? The right atrium. So if it's coming from my brain and head and coming from my arms, it has to find a way into the superior vena cava and go into the right atrium. And all the blood from my lower extremity and my abdominal organs have to find a way through the inferior vena cava. So they are bringing red blood cells that are not carrying oxygen into the right atrium. Now as that blood, and I'm going to make it blue because it is deoxygenated, so it doesn't have oxygen. So as that blood is pulling into the right atrium, the pressure is building up, 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 up. Eventually, the pressure becomes so great that this valve here is going to be forced open. And when it's forced open, all of this blood is going to move into which chamber? Right ventricle. So the blood in here starts to build up, build up, build up. But remember, the right atrium, when it contracts, it contracts superior to inferior. All the blood, at least 90% of it, is passively going to dump into the ventricle. Whatever's left, it contracts. Now the blood gets into the ventricle, it's going to build up inferiorly, and as the pressure builds up there, it's going to contract in which direction? Inferior to superior. And when the, the blood is forced upward, what valve is forced shut? The tricuspid. 
Love dove, love dove, love dove. That's love. That's the love sound that you hear with the stethoscope. And at the same time that this valve shuts, this is a push valve, it's forced open. So now we have blood that's moving in because it pushed that door open, which is the pulmonary semilunar. It goes in the pulmonary trunk. From the pulmonary trunk, it will divide and it'll go to the left side and it'll go into the right side. And when I say it's going to the right side, we'll say it's going to the right lung and it's going into the left lung. So this is a blood vessel that's carrying deoxygenated blood and it's going away from the heart. What do we call the blood vessel that's going away from the heart? Artery. We call it an artery or vein? Artery. artery. So this is the left pulmonary artery. This is the right pulmonary artery. Now, arteries are usually what color? But what color did I make this one? Because why? It's carrying deoxygenated blood. Now it brings that deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Its job there is to pick up what? Oxygen. It picks up the oxygen due to the Bohr effect. The lungs are much more alkalinic, so that Bohr effect, the OHR, the hemoglobin binds to oxygen. Now the red blood cells are oxygenated. It needs to bring that oxygenated blood into the which chamber? Left atrium. So, what color am I making these blood vessels? Red. I'm making them red because they're carrying what type of blood? Oxygen. Great. Oxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood is red. It fills up the left atrium as the pressure builds and builds and builds. What valve is forced open? The bicuspid is forced open. And now this blood will passively diffuse down into the which chamber? Left ventricle, it builds up, builds up. I'm making it red because it's oxygenated. As it builds up and builds up and builds up, what's happening to the pressure? It increases, which way will it contract? Inferior to superior. So as it contracts upward, which valve is forced shut? The bicuspid or mitral valve. And which valve is forced open? the aortic semilunar. So from here, follow this pathway. Let's follow this up. Okay, how am I doing on time? I got two more minutes? Okay, so we have oxygenated blood. Now this valve opens. We have oxygenated blood being forced into the aorta. Here's the arch of the aorta, and we'll have one going to the right side called the brachiocephalic, and we'll have two shooting off to the left, one called the left common carotid and the left subclavian. This is now its responsibility to bring the oxygenated blood back to the brain and to the upper extremity. And then this makes, right, it's called the arch of the aorta, so it goes all the way down through the thoracic region into the abdominal region where we have the abdominal aorta, and then through the abdominal aorta, it has many branches coming off of that, going into all the abdominal organs. And then it splits, one going into each thigh to bring all that oxygenated blood into the legs. These are called the common iliacs. Remember I said anything with the term common, it's safe to assume that it will divide into a internal, internal and external something. Okay. So that is the basic flow of blood through the heart. The right side having deoxygenated blood, so it's sending it into the pulmonary system, into the lungs to pick up the oxygenated blood. Then oxygenated blood is moving into the right, I'm sorry, into the left atrium. But we need to name these vessels. If this was the left pulmonary artery, which are these? Left pulmonary veins. Veins bring blood back to the heart. But what color are these? These are red, not blue. Let's not confuse that on the model. But when you're looking at the superficial arteries and veins on the heart, the red ones will be arteries, the blue ones will be veins. Okay? We're good on time? Great.